Hi, I'm Zach. I'm Danny. And I'm Xander. And today we're going to be working on some AC current measurements. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up an AC circuit on multi-sim. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to view and zoom sheet just so I've got a clear space to work with. Um, then I'm going to add in a title block. Default, so add a title block in. Go ahead and edit it. Uh, title, we'll name it uh, AC circuit uh, demo. Okay, so we'll do power source, go and add in an AC power source first, then we're going to add in the ground, and then we're going to use a uh, couple of resistors, we're going to use a 330 ohm resistor, and a 680 ohm resistor. Okay, so we got everything, so we'll go ahead and... Connect it all now. Set it all up. Rotate this one. Bring this down and start connecting them. Now I'm going to change the colors of these just so I can better see the polarity on this circuit. just to make it neater. Okay, so we got this all set up. Let's change our voltage source. We're going to do uh, two volts and a thousand hertz. And we got it all enabled and everything. All right, so we're going to pull in an oscilloscope now. And we're going to set up channel A across the voltage source. We're going to put one, gonna put the positive lead that way the negative lead to the negative side. And we're going to set up channel B across resistor 2, just like this. Now we're going to go ahead and run our circuit, just for a couple seconds. Go ahead and stop it. And we're going to double click on our oscilloscope, and we're going to make this a little bigger. All right, reverse this, and we're going to go, we're going to do we got channel A across the voltage source, so we're going to turn off channel B for now. And we're going to change channel A to AC. And then we're going to start, we're going to change the scale, the time base scale. We'll go down a little bit. And go back to channel A. And down more. Just until you can get a, a better view of the sine waves. Okay, so now we're going to measure voltage peak to peak first. So we're going to pull one of these over and click go to next Y maximum and click on this one and next Y minimum. Now we don't seem to be, so we got to select trace and go to channel A just so that we have the proper ones we're measuring. So now on channel A we are showing, uh, on channel A we are showing 5.656 volts peak to peak. Um, now, if we want to find uh, the VRMS for this, uh, we need to take the voltage peak to peak and divide by 2. So we have 5.656 <coughs> divided by 2. So. Now we pull that, put that in the calculator. Six five six divided by two, and that is two point eight two eight volts. Okay, so now to find VRMS, we have an equation here where it's uh, zero point seven zero seven times voltage peak. So we're gonna plug this two point eight two eight volts into the equation. Two point eight two eight volts. Now we're going to go back, and we're just going to put that into the calculator, 0 0.707, 
So now we have 1.99 VRMS, root mean square. Okay, so now we, have, we found uh, VRMS, we found VP, uh, we should find uh, time next. So now what we're going to do for time is we're going to find a good spot to do this just to find a, a full cycle. And we're going to go across the x-axis starting here at the beginning of this cycle. Okay, so now we have uh, 200 microseconds per division. So now if we do a measurement, we count the squares, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we do 5 times uh, 200 microseconds, which would give us just about 1 millisecond, which it shows right here. <coughs> so you can go ahead and write that down um, for time. And we'll use the measurement that we got from this oscilloscope on multi-sim. So we have 9, 9, 8, 6, 3, 2, microseconds. So now, to find frequency, which is our next measurement we're trying to find, uh, we need to take the time that we just obtained from the oscilloscope and put one over it. So we're going to have one over 998.632 microseconds. And if we put that in the calculator, we do one divided by 998.632 micro, which is e to the negative 6, equals, and we have 1.001 kilohertz. And that's how you measure VRMS, uh, voltage peak to peak, uh, voltage of one of the peaks, frequency, and time for voltage source. Okay, now we are going to measure everything that we just measured uh, for the voltage source, but we're going to measure across resistor 2. So we're going to go ahead and open up our oscilloscope again, you know, as we already have our circuit set up. Uh, we're just going to increase the accuracy of this. We're going to go this way, increase the scale, and channel B load the divisions. Let's go about let's see if we can just get this a little cleaner. There we go. Uh, let's do this. Okay. So now we're gonna take again, one of these and we're gonna measure uh, voltage peak to peak first. We're gonna change the trace to channel B. Okay. Alright move this over. Uh, y minimum and Y maximum. <coughs> Okay, so now we have a voltage peak to peak of 3.808 volts. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write that down real quick, just so we have it measured. Right, write it down. Uh, 3.808 volts peak to peak. Okay, so now next we're going to measure uh, voltage of one of the peaks. Now we can do this very easily since we have. Uh, voltage peak is equal to voltage peak to peak over 2. So we're going to go ahead and take uh, 3.808, plug in this equation. So we got that, so we're going to put it in the calculator now. 3.808 divided by 2. We have 1.904 volts. Okay, so now we can actually measure uh, the RMS as well. So we're going to take this equation that we used uh, to measure the voltage source, the same one, and we're going to put uh, 1.904 volts into the VRMS equation. And then we're going to put that in the calculator. So times uh, 0.707, and we've got uh, 1.34 say 1.346 volts uh, the RMS. So we got that. And we got that. Now we're going to do uh, frequency and 
or to find frequency, we need to find the time first, as we did cross voltage source as well. So we need to take uh, time it takes for one cycle to cycle. Yes. We're just as accurate as we can. And again, we've got uh, 9.98.632 microseconds. <coughs> Which seems about right, because we've got uh, our scale is 500 microseconds per division. Now we count, it's about, um, just say there's one here, we've got one, two, two, three, that seems about right, it's about two, about two divisions there. So we're just going to take our uh, measurement we got from the oscilloscope, 9.98632, and put it under one to find frequency, 998.632. Microseconds. We're gonna plug that into the calculator. So I'll do one divided by nine nine eight point six three two e to the negative six equals. We got one point zero zero one kilohertz. And that's how you find uh, VRMS voltage peak to peak, uh, voltage peak frequency and time across resistor 2 on multi-sim. Alrighty, we are going to be demonstrating the old school method of using our bench here and our oscilloscope multimeter. But first we want to make sure that our function generator is outputting our correct voltage. So you're going to take your function generator and your ground your multimeter. You're going to hook these together. You can take your positive and your positive multimeter and your function generator and you're going to show that your RMS is going to come out to what we correctly set it to 2. Alright, now we're going to move to our bench portion put a little something together. Now with multimeters or with your function generator you're going to have a wire for your positive, have a wire for your ground, and then we have a 680 ohm resistor here we're going to plug that in right here. Even though some of these resistors are a little bendy, it'll be fine. Now when we're using the oscilloscope, we also want to remember to put a couple of wires because there's not enough to hook onto. So we're going to put two right over here by the ground. Alrighty, so we're going to be measuring volt peak to peak first. So we want to grab our channel 1 oscilloscope probe that we already have set up conveniently, channel 1 and 2. We're going to have one of the grounds and one of the grounds that we set up here. Oh yes, and we also want to make sure that our function generators are hooked up. That would help you. That would help a lot. There we go. Alright. Back to the oscilloscopes. We're going to have one of our ground here. So the scope is going to go on the left side of our first resistor there. This is going to be for voltage source and for resistor 2. I'm going to take our second probe here and we're going to attach it to the left side or the upper part of our resistor 2 and our ground right over. Alright, so we have everything hooked up. We're going to be measuring volt peak to peak. And we want to switch to channel 1 because we're measuring voltage source first. And look at that. Lo and behold, we have it all hooked up, right? And you can count up. You want to move it to the bottom, which we already have. And if we count our divisions, it's going to be 2 volts per division. So if we can count up, it's going to be 2, it's going to be 4. And it looks like it's going to be, you guys remember that each division is 2. So halfway is going to be 1. So then they do about... 1.6-ish, 1.6. So, we're going to plug that in. So, we're going to get 5.6 volts total, right? It's going to be our peak to peak. Now we're going to apply the formula, so we're going to divide this by 2 if we grab our best friend over here. 5.6, 5 by 2. It looks like we're going to get about 2.8. So we're going to take 2.8, we're going to times it by 707, 
And look at that, we're going to get 1.979, which is extremely close to our RMS total of 2. Now we're going to measure our time. Now time is going to be measured here. I'm saying that per division is 200 microseconds. So we can move this back up a little, not to the middle line, it's a little easier. Now we're going to count those divisions again. So we're going to start here at the start of a period. Okay. So if we count, one, two, three, four, and uh, give or take five. Let's say it's around there. All right. So it's going to be five times 200 microseconds. We just grab this. Five times is going to be. Is going to come out to one millisecond. So our time is going to come out to give or take one millisecond. Now it's easy to get the frequency. You're just going to take that one millisecond, which we can do right here, right now. And we are going to take that. We're going to divide it by one. So let's just plug this in. And we're going to get a few. look here to what we set on our function generator. And we have a 1 kilohertz on our function generator. And that's going to be the old school method across peak, peak, RMS, time, and frequency across voltage source. Now we're going to measure those same values, but across resistor 2. Now if you look over here on the bench, you can see that we have our oscilloscopes already set up for R2 as well as our voltage source. So we have that for channel 2. So we're going to hit channel 2 and hit channel 1 to get that out of the way. And look at that. We have our channel 2, which is going to be cross resistor 2. So we're going to measure volt peak to peak, and that's going to be the same exact method as before, but if you notice, channel 2 is going to be different. It's going to be 500 millivolts instead. So we're going to count up those divisions. 1, 2, 3, it's about halfway, maybe 3.5. Okay, so it's going to be 500 millivolts per division. So that's going to be about, let's say, let's say that 500, Let's just say 3.5. Alright, so at the 1.75 volts. 1.75 volts is going to be our peak to peak. Now, to get our RMS, we're going to do the same method that we did before. So, we're going to take that 1.75 and divide it by 2. So, let's do that here. Divide it by 2. We're so talking about 875 millivolts. Now we're going to apply that as well. 875 times 0 0.707, because that's our formula for our RMS. 0 0.707. We're going to get about 618.625 millivolts is going to be our RMS across resistor 2. Alrighty, now we're going to find the time or period of across our resistor 2. So it's going to be the same exact method as before. Now you notice that we have 200 microseconds per division. Do the same thing as before. We're going to count. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be the same exact way as before. So if we take on our calculator, we're going to do 200 microseconds, which is going to be 200 EE negative 6. We're going to times it by 5. You get 1 e negative 3. So it's going to be about 1 millisecond, give or take. We're going to take this. It's going to be our period, or our time. Now, to get frequency, all you're going to do is you're just going to take that and you're going to put it over 1. So let's do that now. 1 divided by 1 e e 
negative 3. And look at that. <clears throat> We're going to get the same value if we convert it back to kilohertz. And if you notice right here, it's going to be the same one. 1 kilohertz. So now we're going to demonstrate um, measuring new school voltage on our circuit. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure um, from peak to peak. So awesome. As you can see, it's 14 volts. And now I'm going to measure the RMS voltage. like so. It's around 5 volts or so. And now I'm going to measure um, the time per period, which is about a millisecond or so. And then I'm going to find the frequency. Which as you can see is around a thousand hertz. So now I'm going to use the new school method to get the same measurements across our resistor 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change over to channel 2, where we currently are calculating everything on our second resistor. So first, I'm going to measure the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. And again, it's around 5 volts or so. And now I'm going to measure the RMS voltage. And that you can see is around 2 volts. Almost. And now I'm going to measure time per period. And that's around a millisecond. And lastly, I am going to find the frequency. And as you can see, it's around a thousand. 